Hello and welcome to What The Hey, where I'm your regular host of What The Hey, and today in What The Hey, I'm once again answering yet another question. When I go to my notebook of knowledge, I see the question of what the hey was the World Trade Center? Now this question comes from Mr. 2007, so hello to you and thank you very much for the question. Across time, people have created grand structures that typically fulfill two different purposes, functionality as well as impressiveness. The World Trade Center was really no different because it was a collection of buildings that typically focused on economics as well as international trade. Further going into the idea of a collection of buildings, specifically it was seven individual buildings that were located in downtown New York City. Before the different World Trade Center buildings were actually completed, the main credited designer Minoru Yamasaki decided to go with the architectural technique of new formalism which the technique of new formalism was one that a lot of people necessarily were excited for because it's like very bland, blocky structures. But the main owners and developers of the different World Trade Center buildings, Port Authority and Tishman Realty, were basically like, we gotta go with this because it's like the most efficient way to make these buildings since they need to be big and useful and functional, so it just kind of worked out that way. I mean, of course, a lot of New York residents weren't necessarily happy with the idea of bland, very big buildings, but like it worked out. I'm going to give you some dates real quick. Keep in mind that these dates are not necessarily relevant to all seven of the buildings. I kind of started it when they all kind of got started and technically when they were all completed. So the first initial step for the World Trade Center buildings was the groundbreaking, which was August 5th of 1966. And then the construction for the first World Trade Center building was August 6th of 1968, so for some reason we like August. And then the completion with the World Trade Center was with the seventh building, which was done in March of 1987. I could not find an actual official date, it was just within that month. Very briefly, I'm gonna go over the purposes of the actual buildings because when I was younger, like in high school, I had no idea what they were actually used for. But when I was doing research for this video, it made a lot of sense because World Trade Center kind of goes into what the buildings are used for, which is international trade and business. Like there were so many different floors to these different buildings, but it made sense because you had so many different businesses and people from those businesses that came from different countries to kind of work together and make it as efficient as possible. But the World Trade Center buildings were not just used for world business. There was also kind of a cultural and general public kind of influence to them as well. So the main purposes for these buildings were for jobs and actual legit business. But there were two other ways that these buildings were used. One of the ways that the general public could interact with these super impressive looking buildings was the fact that they could go to the very top of them and use them as kind of like an observation deck. Which if you look at the pictures of people doing this, I don't think I could do it. Like even the main architect Yamasaki was like, I'm afraid of heights. So like we gotta make these buildings as fortified and as secure as we can, but also let people go to the top of them for some reason. <laughs> Another option that people who weren't doing business in these buildings could do was go to a restaurant called Windows on the World so you could sit near the windows, eat, and probably feel a bit petrified. <laughs> Apparently the food itself wasn't that great, but the main attraction was the fact that they could kind of sit near a window and just like, I don't know, have existential dread. Now this next section of the video is going to go into what probably most people think of when they think of the World Trade Center, which would be the destruction and disruptions of the buildings. So one of the first problems that was put against the World Trade Center was when there was a terrorist attack bombing, kind of like in the lower level garage section of the World Trade Center. And this happened on February 26th of 1993, and thankfully it wasn't as destructive as it could have been because it was in a lower level, like, fortified garage area, but I believe some people were killed and some people were injured. There was a financial robbery done on January 14th of 1998 from a mafia member and they stole a bunch of money. Thankfully, I don't think a lot of people got killed, but that was still pretty traumatic. There was also a dangerous fire that occurred within the World Trade Center. I don't believe there was any malicious intent behind that one. It just spread pretty bad. But of course, what most people think of in terms of destruction for the World Trade Center was on September 11th of 2001 when there was another terrorist attack. And the whole situation with the second terrorist attack was kind of like the first because there was definitely malicious and ill intent with it. 
And what essentially happened was that there were two hijacked planes that were intentionally flown into the two prominent Twin Tower buildings that were a part of the World Trade Center. And the whole situation when it was happening live was very confusing for pretty much anyone who was there. And I'm not gonna put any visuals because it's very traumatic, but when the first plane hit the first building, people assumed that somehow it was a mistake. And news reporters and stations that were covering all of this were very confused and were trying to speculate as to why it happened. But then when the second plane hit the other building, people pretty much assumed that this was a terrorist attack or there was some sort of purpose as to why this was happening. And there are a lot of outlandish rumors and theories as to why it happened in the first place. Some people assume that the president was behind it, but at the time of when the planes hit, he was listening to school children read like he was involved in some other matter. So that one doesn't really make sense. And once the idea of it being a genuine terrorist attack was solidified, people knew that that was what was going on. People knew that the reason why it happened was because the World Trade Center, specifically the Twin Towers, was such a big prominent feature in the US. And the US, for the most part, has always been associated with being very patriotic, very big, very loud. So to have some sort of destruction against a very big American symbol was what the main goal of the terrorist attack was. And the first terrorist attack was pretty much the same thing. Although there was not that much destruction with the first one, there was still that same intent. And of course, with all the news coverage that happened, it kind of spread around the world as it was going live. So all the other countries were like, what is happening? Why did this happen in the first place? And since 2001, there have been some changes in operations to the World Trade Center buildings. There, of course, now is the One World Trade Center building, which is once again used for business. There's also rebuilt versions of the other original World Trade Center buildings. The ones that are done is three, four, and seven. Two and five are in the process of being rebuilt. Speaking of which, the Twin Towers, which were the North and South Tower, AKA the first and second World Trade Center buildings, were the ones that were fully destroyed. The other ones definitely had like damage done to them and a bunch of debris that hit them, uh, but they were eventually torn down. And then finally, what a lot of people still go to see would be the reflecting pools, which were basically the places where the North and South Tower were located before they were destroyed. So a lot of people will go to the reflecting pools to kind of see where the towers would have been to pay their respects because there's like these slabs uh, with the people's names who died during the terrorist attack. And I would say if you have the chance or care to go see the reflecting pools, definitely go and do so. I've been there myself and they're very impressive. It's, it's a very good piece of history to go and see. And with my general opinion, of course, with the initial construction, uh, the actual structures of the buildings themselves, and the usage of them prior to the terrorist attacks, very cool, very interesting, and very impressive. And then with the different terrorist attacks, 9-11 specifically, obviously horrible and saddening that it even happened in the first place. And I hate to say the only good thing that came out of the terrorist attacks was the fact that the world and different countries came together to kind of symbolize and recognize the events of 9-11 and how tragic they were. And of course, when you have any country that goes through that sort of situation, it's definitely helpful to have other people around the world to kind of sympathize and recognize that. So I guess one of the main big things to take away from the World Trade Center situation is that no matter how bad or devastating an event is, people from around the world will still get together to support others. And of course it goes without saying that the policemen, firemen, service animals, and whoever else was there to help that day deserve so much respect because that whole situation was so traumatic. But essentially that's the answer to the question. So if you have any questions, let me know and I'll get to working on them as soon as I can, but that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.